Good morning. Good morning. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Give him praise. Give him glory. You know, um, and excuse me, I am a little hoarse this morning. Um, whew. Oh, excuse me. I was trying to stop a sneeze. Okay, so basically, um, you know, when I'm up this morning, the Lord has woke me up about four o'clock. Praise God. Praise God. And what I keep hearing Thus said the Lord is prayer is our weapon, but I'm going to start off with some scriptures this morning. Um, first, let me go ahead and explain what I have in your sight. Um, this is a book I've read about maybe, oh my God, almost maybe 20, no, yeah, almost 20 years ago. Actually, it was 20 years ago. Frankie Peretti. Now, this is crazy, but let me tell you something. And ain't nobody hating. I just, I know facts, all right? I, I know my gospel. I know my Bible. Trust me. And I know the players. And what I mean by this, this is the guy that started spiritual warfare before there was anybody else. He is the father of it. I don't care what nobody say. I mean, God is ultimate father. But so I read this book about 20 years ago. And it's a real thick book, just to be honest with you. But somebody gave it to me. She was a Christian um, sister. And when she first gave it to me, I was like, I'm not reading that thick book. And then God said, yes, you are, <laughs> just to be honest with you, right? But when I read it, it changed my whole life. And I'm telling you, and I challenge every last one of you to get it. This man is so humble. He is not in the forefront on purpose, but he is a great writer. He has great insight. God gave him insight that actually um, opened the door for spiritual warfare. So anybody that has written any book or anything, um, they should have at least um, Googled him and studied him because Frankie Peretti, he's all that. God gave him insight. So let me tell you what the person in the darkness is. He said, and I've never forgotten this, and then God confirmed this. Pierce in the Darkness is about a book about territorial demons. It's about this female, and I don't want to give you the whole um, spill on it because then it would actually change the connotation of you, what you're looking for. But here's the deal. I, I couldn't read this book all the way through, and I'm a speed reader. I had to push this book down sometimes because the revelation was so great what God gave him, and I found out it to be true. So here's what happens. You ever went to any city, I'm talking about on vacation, Florida, Cancun, Bahamas, whatever the case may be. If you notice, every time you visit a city, it could be home, it could be Chicago, it could be New York, whatever the case may be, Los Angeles. If you notice when you get in that city, either two things are going to happen. Your spirit is going to feel way down or you're going to feel like, oh, I feel good in this city. It feels fresh, refreshing. That's because of this. Whoever prays the most wins the city. Listen to what I'm saying. If the saints are praying more, then that city is ruled by the saints of God. Come on, somebody. This is all spiritual. But if it feels way down, like I presume Chicago, I haven't been there yet. Notice I say yet. Um, I'm sure it has an oppression spirit because there's territorial demons. Well, this is what his foundation for this book was, is that Whoever wins the city is the one that prays the most. Can I tell you something? Demons pray. Satan is pray. As a matter of fact, I'm not trying to be funny. They pray most more than we do. Christians, you know, we, we got to come up. We got to come up. These these people be, they be all night praying to the devil, okay? Get up early in the morning. There, there are certain watches. You know, this stuff is really real. So God told me to present this book to you all for those that want to go to that next level. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be able to just read through that book unless you're just crazy strong. But uh, and I, I know pretty much I'm telling you because I love to read about the word of God. I love to learn about the word of God. I learn to love about the presence of God. This book will take you on that journey. I'm telling you. So if you feel that it feel that to get it. All right. So. But what I want to talk to you about this morning is prayer. God was saying, he said, oh, man, I lost it. He said, uh, I'm in Matthew 4, 4. Hold on, you guys. Um, I do this this way now because of the fact, a way to do it, right? Praise God, praise God. So anyway, I'm back to chapter 4. I'm in Matthew chapter 4. And I want to start off with this. It says, then was Jesus led up? by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I want you to know those that are going through true children of God, because if you, if you, 
if you ain't going through nothing, I'm going to tell you right now, point blank, you need to check yourself because that means Satan has you in some form, shape, fashion or something because um, the true children of God, he's always trying to attack, trying to find a way to get in. And verse two, so I'm in Matthew chapter four. I started at verse one and not verse two. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he after it was hunger, third chapter, I mean, verse three. And when the tempter came to me, said, somebody command these stones to be made to break. So he's always trying to get you to do something that God never told you to do. And four, now this, this is my uh, actually the, the foundation scripture. He says, but he answered and said, it is written. Now, if you read my title, it says, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And this was the scripture of God. This was the word of God. Praise God. Praise what I'm seeing right now. This is what God wanted me to tell you is that prayer is going to take you to the another level. Prayer is going to keep your foundation. Prayer and fasting, they go hand in hand. Can I tell you something? The Pharaoh system has done a good job on most people. Most godly people, they got everybody just weighed down with trying to get to work, trying to do this, trying to just make a living instead of making a difference. I just said something, trying to make a living instead of making a difference. The Bible says it is written. He says that three times. Let me tell you something why it is written, because you cannot beat the devil without using the word of God. That's how Jesus won. Jesus spoke the word. Jesus didn't speak an opinion. He didn't, he didn't call everybody. He didn't get on Facebook. They didn't have Facebook, but he, he didn't do all that. What am I saying? Saints in this latter last days, you're going to have to speak the word to combat your situation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The word of God. Let me tell you what the enemy has done. The enemy has came in and he got everybody so busy that you don't spend time with God. You know, I, I, I've been extremely like going, I mean, just moving fast lately, doing all the assignments that God have entrusted me to do. And I'm going to tell you something. I still heard that get up at four o'clock this morning. And yes, I was like, oh, God, I'm sleepy. You know what I'm saying? I just want to late here. But I, it's not about, no, you don't hear what I'm saying. When you have an assignment, when you called, and we are all, because let me tell you what the Bible says. He says, many are called and few is chosen. You want to know what the many do? The many do what they want to do. They lazy, I'm going to do what I want to do. That Cain spirit. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But he says, but few is chosen. You know what the few do? Well, we, our flesh don't want to to do. We're going to go in and pray. We're going to stay extra. We're going to do this. You don't hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. To, and that's not to glorify ourselves. It is that we have to go where God has called us to go. We have a destiny. We have a calling. We have an assignment. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The enemy got everybody into this entertainment spirit, got people doing things that is not of God. The whole thing is to take people away from God, to distract you. And most of the time, you don't know that you're being distracted until people are finished distracting you, whether it is a person, place, or thing, or a job. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I, I, I'm, I'm noticing something. The more that I actually um, grow in God, the older I get, the things that we think matter, they really don't matter. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah, walk with me this morning and come with me this morning. Let me tell you something. The things that we think are pretty important, maybe you need to reevaluate. Have you your first ministry is your family, in case you didn't know that? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, pastors don't preach on this level. Your first ministry is your family. So I, I'm I'm side eyeing everybody that is so beautiful and so sweet and so nice to everybody in the church, but yet you treat your own family like you know what? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Your second ministry is is getting close to God. It is not a job, it is not a house, it is not a car not trying to impress people. And I know that we try to impress people. Oh, no, 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 no. You have to love your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. I am not saying that this would be easy. This would be the hardest thing that you have to do in your life. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why the enemy of the came in the church. And what he got the church doing is, is wanting to go on vacation and, and wants to have it, you know, easy and want to get on Facebook and, and, and presume to do this. And everybody wants to look good. But are, are you being good in the inside? 
And everybody wants to look like they have it going on. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to walk with you this morning if you don't want to walk with me. Let me tell you something. We all got issues. You can sit up there and play that game like everything is perfect, like everything is just lolly dotty. The devil is a liar, honey. The truth be told, you're going to go through some stuff in this life because it is written. He said, there will be trials. There will be tribulations. There will be tests. He said, for the righteous, you will surely be tested. You will surely be tried. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But but this the way we do this thing is we, we ask God. God, help us. God, keep us. And we put God first, not our own fleshly desires. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere with that thing. You got to understand who you are and whose you are. And you got to do your part. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to get in that word. A lot of people, you don't make time for God. You have to have a relationship with God. A lot of people, I truly believe that they love God. Even the ones that don't think that they serve God. I'm talking about the atheists and every other person that don't believe so say in God. But you ever notice that they know the scripture? You ever notice they know when you lie? You ever notice that they know the script? Um, they mem- memorize scripture, quote scripture, do everything because they know that there's a God. But the problem is I don't want to obey God. That's what they do. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Your flesh will always fight against because the flesh lies fleshly things and the spirit mind spirit things. That's why God says those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. If you have not the spirit of God, you cannot operate in the truth of God. That's why there's so much of falling away right now. People do not know sound doctrine, and I'm going somewhere with this this morning, too. I'm going somewhere. I noticed something else that they've been trying to attack people with. Um, if you are not under a church, let me tell you something. I, I don't know why y'all sitting up there lying. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of each other. Do you know everybody that's on this live right now, everybody that will listen to you? You know we're assembling. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know the word that's going forth. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't make me start this morning because I stay on one. Hallelujah. It, he says, if any two should touch and agree. He said, if any two are gathered in my name, oh, come on, somebody, you want to go biblical? I can go biblical with you. I'm going somewhere. God took me out of an organized religion since 2015. I felt so weird because I had been in church since I was 27. He says, Dana, I'm taking you on the back roads. I want to show you something. Can I tell you something? No, I do not belong to anyone's church. And I tell you one thing. My anointing is still heavy. I still serve God. I still love God. I still obey God. I'm going somewhere. Oh, I'm going somewhere because a lot of people feel that if you are not under somebody, then you are out of order. Let me tell you what out of order is. Obeying man rather than God. Come on somebody. And that's scripture too. Paul say, oh, we ought to obey God rather than men. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere because you're judging people. You're trying to act like people don't have the Holy Ghost because they ain't under. Let me tell you something. I'm about to make somebody mad this morning. Hallelujah. I know so many people that go to church every Sunday and you still live like hellions. I ain't judging you. I just see you. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. More than that, you think that I'm going under that stuff. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Most of you have stuff and y'all always want to say, hug your neighbor. Ain't nobody trying to hug no warlock or no witch. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh uh, yeah. I'll pray for him and cast that demon out, but I don't want that spirit on me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're wondering why you're going home. Oh, I'm about to go here. God, I didn't know you was going to make me do this this morning. My God, my God, I'm not going to say the church name. So that's going to be a good thing here in Augusta, Georgia. Lord, I knew you was going to make me say it one day. My God, my God. I went and visited this church. I ain't going to say no name today. And um, the pastor, um, I'm trying not to say too much because people are smart with the discernment. Y'all are picking up quick. Let's just put it this way. Um, They're a nice pastor. And I knew something was wrong. Lord, have mercy. I came home. And I had a sexual dream. Oh, Lord. You know, I got scared, right? I woke up the next morning. I said, oh, I repent, God. I repent. He said, what you repent for? That ain't you. He said, but what you went under. He said, I said, well, why you let me go? He said, because I wanted you to understand what's in these churches. Spirits are just is floating around. Demons, demonic forces are just floating around. Let me tell you something. I'm very first. I've been in, I was in church for a long time under great leaders. I am equipped. To dissect that word, to preach that word, to teach that word. And I'm getting ready to tell you something. Whatever anointing that the pastor, preacher, or teacher is under, I don't care, even on Facebook. That's why you have to be careful who you let feed your spirit. 
I promise you, whatever they're working with, you will have a deposit of it. Oh, I just said something. You don't eat at everybody's table. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Like mama say, everybody hands not clean. Y'all ain't ready for me. Oh, come on, somebody. So when I had that sexual dream, I said, I'm not going back to that church. I just, I just can't do it. I'm not judging the pastor per se, but something wrong. And I already knew what was wrong. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, because I don't have sexual dreams like that. I don't roll like that. I don't allow that stuff in my spirit. Oh, I just said something going to mess somebody up. Have you ever been visiting a church and lately you go home and you think, oh, yeah, y'all get what I'm saying? So that's spirits. I'm not saying every church. I'm saying most churches. Yeah, I said it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something what I have learned during my tenure as a saint, a believer. You have to watch your gates, what you listen to, what you think, what you say, all your gates, every opening of your body, even a sexual open. That's why they're so tired. Y'all sleeping with these witches and warlocks and wondering why you going through because you have a covenant. Anything that you um, have a relationship with, you have a covenant. Money is a covenant. Come on, somebody. And y'all be sewing into some witches and warlocks and you wonder why your finances is kind of terpsitizing. Oh, I didn't made up a whole new word. <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. This is a trip. You have to count the cost. I don't do anything without the spirit of God. And what I'm saying is this. I say, God, should I do this? God, because God knows what we don't know. God see what we see. And I'm going to tell you something. You can visit a church. It sound like God. It look like God. But I promise your spirit will be like something wrong. Wait a minute. Something is wrong here. And, and again, it's not. Yeah, we do judge. We do judge. Because do, do you not know? And this is scripture that the saints should judge the world. So it is very important for us to have a relationship. But it's most important to pray. Oh, you got to pray, people. Wake up praying. Go to bed praying. Do out throughout the day praying. On your job praying. Anoint yourself. You guys are not doing. Yes, this Christian walk, you have to be prepared. You are a warrior of God. So, therefore, you must be equipped and, and you must act accordingly. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to be on your job because these devils on their job 24-7. You think it's a game? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They are trying to take people. They are trying to taint you. They are trying to stop you. They're trying to discourage you. They're trying to just uh, still kill and destroy like God says. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But God says, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God is real people. God is real people. God is real people. Hallelujah. And he loves you. He want me to tell you he loves you. But you must love yourself. You must come to the grips of forgiving people. Come on, somebody. Don't walk around with all this hatred and all this. Don't be doing all that stuff. Because here's the deal. If something happened to Dale tomorrow and you was you was on your deathbed, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, would it be important to have a grudge against your brother or your sister? Count the cost, said the Lord. Where will you spend eternity? Y'all got to watch how you treat people. Be mindful. So many people just live any kind of way. And then when something happens, oh, they, they want to cry to God. Come on now. You got to be mindful. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I pray that you understand what I'm saying this morning. And let me tell you something, too. And I got to say this because I, I see it. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm on one this morning. Hallelujah. They have a witch and a warlock on here. I see I see you. I know who you are. I'm going to tell you directly. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You see, let me tell you all something. Where there's God, there's always evil present. Y'all need to understand something. Because they come in and what they do is they be saying prayers under their breath. I'm, I'm going to teach y'all some things this morning. But what they don't understand is the anointing will let me know who you are. I know who you are. And, let me, and, and, and I'm talking to you because I want you to know that you, 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 you can't touch this. Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I, 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 I'm working with God. And God is working with me. And, and to be honest with you, he's trying to save you. So, so I would, if I was you, I would repent. Because sooner or later, say every tongue should confess. Oh, you ain't got to confess now, but you won't confess fest later. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because you said, I'm going to tell you, the enemy has you fooled thinking that you have power. You have no power because what you're summoning, let me tell y'all something why a lot of people say, well, can you come back from selling your soul? Once you start playing with witchcraft and sorcery and divination, you are selling your soul a little at a time for the power. So can you sell what you don't have? Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me because now your soul will be required in hell because now you got to understand the same power that the devil is giving you to do the little spells, hexes, vexes, 
this curse is, which I rebuke and sever that thing to the root of that thing by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you're selling your soul. You can't sell something. Once you have, that's what people don't understand. So, so you're playing with the darkness. Don't you understand that your soul will be required because now the devil say, well, wait a minute. I, I gave them power. So now you belong to the devil. Y'all don't understand how this thing go, huh? Whoever possessed your soul, that's who, that's who your Lord is. Hallelujah to his name. So I just want you to know, um, I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see you. I've, I've been seeing you, but you know, I just decided to address you this morning because that's how bold I am. I ain't scared of you. And like I said, you better repent for time is at hand. And you, who knows if God would have mercy on your soul. Oh, you know, it's the truth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I caught that statement you made the other day about the light zone. You couldn't know that unless you was um was all in mind. Yeah, cause yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm on one. I'm on one. I, I just so every now and then you gotta tell them devils. I see you. I see you. I see you. All right, God bless you. Let me say a prayer. Let me let me get really get them mad, right? Cause they they're they gonna get off of here cause they can't stand that anointing when I pray. All right, so let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Give him prayers. Give him thanks, y'all. He give him glory. Don't you know that we were made to worship him? Don't you know that it is by his grace, his mercy that we even exist and persist? Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everybody that's on the sound of my voice, Father God, in the name of Jesus, may the blood of the Lamb, I say the blood comes against you, Satan. The blood comes against you, Satan. The blood comes against you, Satan. Oh, it is the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood that run through our veins. The blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray that you strengthen them throughout the day. I pray that you just, Father God, be with them. Let them have wisdom and discernment, Father God. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Strengthen their mind, their body, their soul, Father God. Bless them financially, Father God. Keep them, Father God, from all evil in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory for you are alpha and omega the beginning and end you are el shaddai you are oh hallelujah jehovah rapha the lord our provider oh father god is there anything too hard for you father god oh hallelujah keep us throughout the day father god oh father god we pray for our children everybody that's getting on the bus father god we pray for those father god that nobody gets snatched up father god in the name of jesus christ we go through our schools this morning father god let the spirit of god go through the schools father god reign again father Father God, rule again, Father God. Father God, we just ask you for your power in this hour like never before, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. We summon you this morning, Father God. We give you honor, God. Do what you want to do. Change our hearts, Father God. Direct us, inspect us, check us, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I plead the blood of Jesus over this prayer. I say this prayer will not be hindered, stopped, or blocked, but will accomplish what it was sent out to do in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father God, we give you honor. We give you prayer praise and let us say amen 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 hallelujah 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 let me tell you something the power of god is still real and that's why we're not seeing the power of god in these churches there must be demonstration the word of god is not just in word but in power will say the lord hallelujah he says i am with you hello always even until death he says that my people that are called by my name if you will show humble yourselves then i will heal your land i will heal your body i will restore what the enemy has done hallelujah and what has been taken from you said the lord hallelujah to his name i feel the power of god so you just got to be strong oh, oh his own war the warfare is real so god bless you and god keep you this is apostle deanna dixon you know how we do it roll out soldiers for that is who we are god bless